Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we are taking a look at the Waxker JL7 10 watt laser engraver. This benchtop diode laser is the fastest 10 watt laser that I've used, cutting at ridiculous speeds for its price. But is it a one trick pony or is the JL7 a great candidate for an entry level laser cutter? Let's find out. Before we begin, this JL7 was provided for free for me to review by Waxker. As with all of my reviews, they are not paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this laser engraver for the last month. My videos do have affiliate links in the description. They are a great way for you to help support my channel and let me keep creating videos like this. Let's get into it. The JL7 is a 10 watt diode benchtop laser engraver by Waxker. The diode laser produces a 450 nanometer wavelength laser, which is a visible blue light. Diode lasers are great for cutting or engraving materials like wood, leather, stone, paper, opaque acrylics, and anodized aluminum. But they do not cut transparent materials like glass or clear acrylic. At the top of the laser module is a fan which blows down through the module, cooling the laser and clearing away smoke. The laser module has a red plastic shroud with a neat insert that redirects the airflow directly over the laser spot. This does an excellent job at clearing smoke, but also acts as a mini air assist. I could not get any visible flames to appear, even when cutting at 100% power and way too slow of speeds. Also like an air assist, the directed airflow also increases cut speeds. This is the fastest cutting 10 watt laser that I've used by a significant margin. If you look at my other 10 watt diode laser reviews, the fastest of them cut 3 mm plywood at 190 mm per minute. On the JL7, I was cutting at 350 mm per minute, or 84% faster. It is seriously impressive. My model shroud does not have a cutout for an additional air assist to be installed. Waxker's website does sell a model with an air assist compressor though, so that must have a different shroud. The laser module also has a built-in focus guide. Simply move the laser over your material, flip down the guide, and slide the module down until it touches the surface. Tighten the screw, flip up the guide, and you're ready to start cutting or engraving. Moving to the frame, the JL7 has a working area of 400mm by 400mm. The frame is made from custom extruded aluminum, and the gantry is belt driven on rubber V-slot wheels. The JL7 is very lightweight, and it is easy to move and carry around. The Y-axis is driven by two independent stepper motors. There is no coupling between them. That does mean that it's possible to move one side, introducing skew. This is generally not going to be an issue if you assemble the frame correctly and don't force one side after homing, but I wanted to point that out. The cables all come nicely wrapped and neatly cable managed. On the front you can find the TF card reader, the power button, a button for engraving from the TF card, a USB port for the optional rotary roller, and a USB type C port to connect to your computer, and the power input. Waxker also sells a few optional accessories for the JL7. They have two types of rotary attachments, a chuck rotary and a roller rotary attachment. They plug into the USB port at the front and allow you to engrave on round and cylindrical objects. I haven't tested them, so they aren't part of this review, but it is good to know about possible future upgrades. Waxker also sells honeycomb panels, which would be my first recommended upgrade. The JL7 comes with a small 8 by 12 inch steel plates for you to use as a work surface. You really want a raised surface to cut on though, for more consistent cuts and ventilation. These honeycomb panels are perfect for that, and every laser cutter should use them. The Waxker JL7 arrives neatly packed and does require assembly. The included assembly instructions give step-by-step -step instructions with pictures, and all tools are included. It took me about 30 minutes to assemble, and it's not very complicated. I did mess up one step however. I placed the Y-axis end stop upside down, which caused the switch to not hit the end stop. The picture and the instructions are correct, I just didn't notice. It's an easy fix and caused no damage, but pay attention to the position. The package also includes a brush, a replacement lens, and a dry erase marker. Waxker provides a copy of Laser Gerbil, as well as a trial version of Lightburn on the TF card. I always recommend picking up a license for Lightburn, as that software is great. Instructions for both are in the manual, and the config files are on the TF card. You can control the JL7 either by connecting it to your computer via the USB cable, putting a file on the TF card for offline engraving, or by using the MKS Laser smartphone app. The JL7 has an onboard Wi-Fi, allowing you to connect the laser to your phone via the MKS Laser app. However, the app has never worked on my Pixel 7 correctly. I've never been able to connect any laser, including the JL7, so your mileage may vary. Offline engraving works by saving a G-code file named 001.nc on the TF card and inserting it into the machine. A single press of the button will cause the laser to frame the border of the design. Once you are happy with the position of your material, long pressing the button starts the job. The file name is very particular. I could not get it to read from any other file name. That means that you only have 
have one design on the TF card at a time. There is no way to select different designs. Now let's look at how well the JL7 cuts and engraves. The JL7 tears through woods. I was consistently cutting 3mm plywood in a single pass at 350mm per minute. The cuts were clean, and the engravings left no discolorations around the edges. For my kerf tests, I determined that a kerf offset of 0.055mm was perfect. That is a much smaller kerf when compared to more powerful lasers, meaning that the JL7 is well focused. Photo engraving also worked well. 12,000 millimeters per minute seems to be the sweet spot for the JL7. These photos of my dog Jack turned out great. I love engraving slate on diode lasers. The JL7 performed perfectly, easily engraving onto the surface of these slate coasters. While diode lasers cannot engrave away metals, they can interact with oxide layers on metals. These anodized aluminum business cards look great. The engraved area has crisp edges, and Waxker's recommended settings worked great on all colors. The JL7 can also mark stainless steels. By varying the power and line intervals, you can change how the heat affects the oxides on stainless steel, creating magnificent colors. Beautiful blues, purples, oranges, and browns are possible on stainless steel. I love the look of these colors. Watchker's marketing page is a little misleading about the safety features. It mentions a built-in gyroscope that stops the machine if it is tilted more than 15 degrees, for example if it is pulled off of a table. It does have a gyroscope, but it seems to only trigger at about 45 degrees. They also mention multiple limit switches with audible bell alarm icons. There are two limit switches at the min of the X and Y axes, but there is no limit switch at the max of the X axis, and none of them actually trigger an audible alarm. There doesn't appear to be a buzzer on the JL7. And I did run into one issue when I first set up the JL7. Watchcar provides a TF car with all of the software and instructions on it, as well as a TF card reader. However, the reader did not work for my laptop. No matter what port I used, the computer did not recognize it. When I used a different microSD card reader though, it worked as expected, so you might need a different card reader if the included one does not work. I am a little confused by the brand name Waxker. The Waxker JL7 is a carbon copy of the Kentalk Tool JL7. Same design, same packaging, and even the Waxker's instruction manual shows pictures showing the machine name of the Kentalk Tool JL7. I'm not sure if it's a simple rebranding, or if there's something else going on. Both websites and stores are still active, so you can pick up a JL7 from either, and they both have active Facebook groups. If anyone knows the history of these companies, let me know in the comments. So let's wrap it up. For my testing, the Waxker JL7 is a very impressive 10 watt laser cutter. While you can find much more powerful lasers on the market these days, more powerful lasers come at the expense of a larger laser dot size. That can affect engraving quality and increase the kerf size when designing parts that fit together. The JL7 could be that sweet spot for makers, balancing speed, pricing, and quality. It was easy to assemble and get started with your first cut. And I really like the design of the shroud, where you don't need an external air assist compressor running for clean cuts. That means that the JL7 is quieter to run, while still being the fastest 10 watt laser that I've reviewed. Besides the faulty SD card reader, I didn't run into any other hardware or software issues. The JL7 seems like a solid and reliable machine. The Watchker JL7 10 watt laser engraver sells for $480 US dollars as of May 2024, with the Air Assist version selling for $100 US dollars more. This is on the middle to high side compared to other 10 watt laser engravers on the market. The JL7 is the fastest 10 watt laser that I've used though, so I feel like that price is justified. If you are looking for a sub $500 laser engraver, the Watchker JL7 would be a great fit and easily gets my recommendation. So thank you all for watching my review of the Watchker JL7 10 watt laser engraver. What was your favorite feature of the JL7? Was there anything missing? Please let me know in the comments down below. And if you are still in the market for laser engravers, take a look at my other reviews, like the Acer P10 10 watt laser engraver. I have plenty of other reviews and projects in the works, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.